quick look inside the payload. We've got eight Starlink simulators getting ready to make their way into outer space. Uh, but great flight so far. Booster able to make it all the way to its uh, splashdown and landing burn experiment. So that was really exciting to see. We got ship on orbit, nominal orbital insertion. So right on the money with its trajectory. Now we're ready to start tackling a couple of in-space objectives. So next up, we are currently venting down the, the nose cone, essentially the payload area of Starship as we get ready to open up this payload door. We were able to do this successfully for the very first time uh, on our last flight, on flight 10. Oop. Hal got ahead of me. Looks like he's opening up the payload door already. All right, looks like we got the door open. All right, so payload door is open. Next up, gonna be to start deploying these Starlink simulators. They are roughly the same size as the V3 Starlink satellites that Starship's going to be carrying. That's going to add some, some pretty crazy capacity. We'll run through the numbers in a little bit. Uh, we were able to do this for the very first time ever on our last flight, and so this will be another test. We made a couple of tweaks to the, to the rails um, for deploying this based off of what we saw last time, uh, but excited to see these get out the door. Um, our next iteration of Starship's also going to have kind of a more powerful Pez. Uh, it's going to deploy these at a little bit faster speed. Uh, but looking to see our, our next demonstration of this, hopefully in the next couple of seconds, we should start seeing them move out the door. I mean, that, that view on your left, so you're basically, that, that that would be if you were sitting at the very top of the nose cone looking down. So there's kind of a short stack. There's four on either side, so eight total. Uh, when we start flying Starlinks uh, for the, their actual deploy missions, we're going to be carrying stacks of about 60. So much larger stack once we start flying these operationally, uh, but still doing a little bit of a short just for, for this payload deployed today. Looks like we got a little bit of movement there, Dan. Coax it out. Get it moving, Jake. There we go. All right. First one going out. All right. First one's deployed. Getting ready for the second one here. We do a little reset back to the center position. Yeah, it takes about a minute for each one. Looks real smooth, too. They made a couple of tweaks to those rails. If you watched the last ones, it had a couple of bumps on the way out, but moving out super clean this time. Yeah, and as noted earlier in the show, but definitely worth repeating, Starship will deploy Starlink's more advanced V3 satellites, adding 60 terabits per second of capacity to the network per launch. Uh, so that's 20 times more than each Falcon 9 launch does today. Just incredible. Yeah, and any, anybody that's been following Starship, you know Starlink's kind of the MVP for these flight tests where it's not only giving us the views we're seeing right now, uh, but also just real-time data through every phase of flight. So we've got a couple dozen cameras on Starship. We've also got a bunch of cameras spread across the globe, including out in the Indian Ocean where we've got our fun buoys floating. There goes another one. And 
And I mean, we're, we're using Starlink to bring all of this together. It's our, our drone shots you see here uh, from our great team down here at Starbase, all connected. So Starlink, not only giving us cool views off the planet, but also on the planet, help bring everybody along for all these Starship flights. I think that's number four. Somebody check my math. Yeah, we've got four Starlink terminals on the outside of Starship. He uses that to talk to the Constellation. And through that, we actually get about 120 megabits of bandwidth for our downlink. That's our real-time HD video, all of our telemetry. So it's not just kind of giving us these cool views inside, but it's giving all that engineering data in real time, including re-entry, when normally a plasma layer builds up and blocks you out. Starlink, powerful enough of a frequency that we're able to kind of punch through that and still get that live view. Next one out the door. There we go. All right, yeah, Starlink is the world's largest satellite constellation operating in low Earth orbit to deliver high speed, low latency broadband internet. This provides internet access to people around the world many of who have never had connectivity before. Oh. <laughs> right, today Starlink serves more than 150 countries, territories, and other markets with over 7 million active customers and counting. Uh, to meet the global growing demand for high-speed internet, SpaceX expanded its factory over in Bastrop, Texas, which is just outside of Austin, and also introduced Starlink Mini, as well as an upgraded version of the Starlink Standard Kit. Yeah, and one thing to note about this satellite deploy is that they will be following the same suborbital trajectory of the ship. So these dummy sats will not be going in orbit. We do expect them to burn up on re-entry. Couple more to go. I promise one of these days we'll deploy in daylight. But we're, we're basically trading deploy in the dark so we get those re entry views uh, for the daytime. I think we got one more to go. All right, now with payload deploy complete, Starship will now close its payload door and continue to coast around Earth to the Indian Ocean. We still have a ton of major events to come today, including Raptor Relight at about uh, T plus 37 minutes. <laughs> uh, that will be followed by atmospheric reentry and splash down. <laughs> So with that, we're going to go on another quick post. Yeah, if you can hear us, 